seen any Easter eggs in the supermarket at the moment. Well, you might have done because not that long away now is a time called Easter. And in the time leading up to that, Christians call that time Lent. And what is Lent all about? Well, Lent is about preparing and getting ready for Easter. And Christians like to use it as a time to think about God and all that he has done for us. And sometimes Christians like to do some things for Lent too, but we're going to talk about those things a little bit more later. But the story behind why we have Lent, that is found in the Bible. And it is all about before Jesus went and did all his work on earth, all of the good things he did for people like healing them and meeting the sick and telling people good news. Before all that, he went into the desert for quite a long time where he prayed and he fasted. Now fasting is where you don't eat any food. That's quite tricky, isn't it? So I wonder how long you think Jesus went into the desert to do that for? Do you think it was A, seven days, so about a week? Or do you think it was B, 15 days, so about two weeks? Or C, 40 days, so about six weeks? Which one do you think it is? That's right, it's C. It was 40 whole days. Now that is a long time. And those 40 days, that's about the same amount of time that we have Lent for, that we prepare for Easter in. Now, Mark is going to tell us the Bible story all about when Jesus was tempted in the desert. But first, I wonder if you know what the word tempted or temptation means? Well, temptation is maybe when someone tries to make you do something that you know you shouldn't, or when you're tempted when you want to do something which you know isn't actually very good. We're going to talk about that a little bit more later, but first let's hear our Bible story. Hi everyone. So, today, as Bethany said, we're thinking about temptation and the Bible story today is the temptation of Jesus. The Bible says Jesus is the Son of God. Now when Jesus was about 30 years old he was just going to start teaching and doing miracles but there were two very important things that had to happen before he started. First of all Jesus' cousin John was telling everyone about Jesus and how they should listen to and do everything he said so that they could be saved. John was baptizing people in the River Jordan. Jesus went to John to ask to be baptized. And when he came up out of the water, a voice from heaven said, this is my son. I am really pleased with him and I love him. Then the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus like a dove. The next thing that happened was that Jesus went into the desert to pray and fast. Fasting is not eating and drinking. And Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days. That's nearly a month and a half without food. At the end, he was really hungry. The devil knew this and he tried to trick Jesus into disobeying God. He said to Jesus, if you really are the son of God, why don't you command these stones to turn into bread? Then you could eat as much as you wanted and you'd be satisfied. Jesus turned to the devil and said, the Bible says you shall not live on bread alone, but by the words that God says. This annoyed the devil, so he took Jesus up to the highest point of the temple in Jerusalem. And this time he tried to trick Jesus by using words from the Bible. He said, why don't you throw yourself off? Because the Bible says God will command his angels to catch you so that you don't hurt yourself. Jesus said, the Bible also says, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. 
the devil became increasingly frustrated and he thought he'd have one more try. This time, he took Jesus up to the highest mountaintop and he showed him all the wonders of the world and the kingdoms in all their splendor. I have the power to give all of this to you. I will make you ruler over everything you see if you will bow down and worship me. Get away from me! Jesus shouted. The Bible says you shall worship the Lord your God only. Don't worship anyone but him. Stop trying to get me to disobey my father in heaven. At this, the devil realized that he couldn't get Jesus to sin. So he left in a rage. And then angels came down to look after Jesus. So even under the greatest pressure, Jesus was able to resist temptation. And so can you, because the Bible says, if you resist the devil, he will flee from you. Now, a bit like Jesus was tempted in the desert by all sorts of things that could have distracted him from God, Christians often choose to give up something for Lent that might distract us from God. So I've got Robert, my brother, here. And Robert, what have you decided to give up for Lent this year? So I've decided actually to give up chocolate this year. Chocolate, nice. And why did you decide to give up chocolate? Just because I just want to eat it all the time. Like breakfast, mid-morning, lunchtime, maybe a bit in the mid-afternoon, evening, even before I go to bed, just midnight doesn't really matter. You, just all the time. You think about chocolate all the time. Yeah, in my dreams. Wow. Like, yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow, well, that definitely sounds like a good idea to give that up. And you're going to have so much more time to think about God, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I won't be thinking about chocolate, so... Well, good job, Robert. Maybe I'll check in with you later, see how you're getting on. Okay. Sounds like a good idea. So it's a bit later in the day now, so why don't we go and see how Robert is getting on having given up chocolate. So I think Robert is doing his schoolwork at the moment. Should we see how he's getting on? Robert, why do you have so many cream eggs there for your schoolwork? They help me with my maths, you see. With these problems, I need to add up big numbers. Right. And the cream eggs, I can use them to represent numbers. And it really that's helps me. helping you not eat them? Yes. Okay. Yes. Where are you off to now, Robert? Well, I'm going to play tennis. Uh, Robert, what are all those things poking out your pocket? Well, they're smarty tubes. Why do you have so many smarties? I'm keeping them safe so far after Lent, because otherwise other people will eat them. Uh, so I'm just keeping them with me. If you're sure. Oh, Robert, is that your school bag? Yeah. Um, do you have a pen in there I could borrow? Maybe at the bottom. Let's have a look. If it wants to come out. Oh. Uh, Here's the pen. Thank you, but Robert, what is all of this? Well. These were meant for my school friends, but we went into a lockdown, so I've kind of just been transporting them around ever since. So that's why you've got hundreds of mini eggs yes. in your bag? Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh, Robert, it took me a while to find you. Robert, what are you doing? You caught me there. Mm. Did you get tempted? I did. But as you can see, I haven't eaten it, actually. Well, it was just, it was just here. Just okay. Well, Robert, shall I take that away from you to help you out? You are doing a good job. Yeah. Oh, Robert, reading the Bible now, that'll be a good distraction. Yeah, it is, it is. Um, Robert, what's that? That's my bookmark. Are you sure it's not a dairy milk? Yep. Okay. Well, if that helps you not eat chocolate, <laughs> then... You do you. It's really hard not to be tempted to do something which we quite like sometimes. And as you saw, Robert really likes chocolate and he was finding it quite hard to give it up. 
but he has so far managed not to eat any. And actually, as Christians, we think maybe saying no to something we like to show God how important he is to us is really good. And in our Bible story, we saw how Jesus was able to say no to all of the temptation and focus on God and talking to him. And sometimes we might be tempted to say things or do things which actually aren't that good for us. But when we do, it can be really good to say sorry to God for those things and ask him to help us next time to do better. And so Mark's going to lead us in a prayer now as we say thank you, sorry and please to God. So it's now time for us to pray again. And... I know we say this every week, but if you want to make this prayer your own, you can do so by just saying Amen with me at the end. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you that you sent your son Jesus to the world to show us how to live. I'm sorry when I get things wrong. Please forgive me and please help me to resist temptation in the future. Amen. Jesus, you are mine. 